Well hey everyone, my name is Sam, and welcome back to Sam Strains, and welcome back to the channel. Today we have another great layout update for you guys, but before we get into that, I have something really cool to show you. Something that has been six years in the making, something that I've wanted to do since I've owned the engine. Something that I'm very excited to announce. It's back and it runs. Okay, real quick, before we go into the shop and we actually do layout work, I needed to talk to you guys real quick. A couple of big announcements. First off, I have a Discord and an Instagram for Sam's Trains. If you want to find both of them, the links are in the description right down there. You can go click on them, join them, follow me. I post relatively often, or I try to talk as much as I can. I also post updates usually sooner than I do on YouTube, so if you want the inside scoop on what I'm doing layout-wise, go down there, follow me. Now, this is the big piece of news, and I put this in the end of the last video, and I don't think a lot of you guys saw it. I think a very small percentage of you did. So, I have a layout tour coming up, but it's not quite a personalized layout tour. If you guys know about the Lionel Operating Train Society, they're having their annual convention right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. They were originally going to go visit the Crossville Model Railroad Club, but we've since lost our physical location, so they're not able to come tour the layouts anymore. However, the Lots Convention is coming here to my layout on July 15th as part of their tour. If you want, you can go to the Lots website. I'll put a link down there in the description below as well. You can go sign up for the convention, and you can come see my layout. Now, this time, it is through Lots. I can't personally invite people. You have to come through them. I will be doing another tour at some point in time, but school's firing up again soon, and I don't know when I'll be able to do that. So if you want the first opportunity to come see my layout in its early stages, this is your opportunity. Now, with all that being said, let's go into the shop and let's check out what we've done so far. So I came up here once and I didn't record anything. I was up here for literally one day, so I didn't, I did a little bit, but I didn't record anything. And all day today I've been socializing with folks and friends while working, so I haven't recorded anything of today. But let's go over what has been done. Over here on the left side, you can see that there's now a new 072 to 054 turnout over there. And that is for a reversing loop, which I'll be working on in the near future. Over here, I've cleaned off almost everything on the yard besides the coal train, which is still sitting on there. That's probably going to sit on there for the duration of the layout building process, I, th I think. Um, but the biggest news is I've done more wiring in the yard. This track is now fully isolated. You can see by the markings over there with tape. And I've done the wiring for this. Now, it kind of makes the track sit up a little bit the way I did the wiring. But tracks aren't level in the real world, and that kind of adds a little bit more realism. But if we go down here, you can now see, you can just barely see where those two wires come out now. Over on this side, all these supports were not secure, so we finally screwed them down in every single place possible. So now this is literally solid as a rock. I can't pick this up anywhere. It's good to go. We also anchored all the supports on the bottom down to the table. I've also done more electrical blocking over here, just figuring out where I want the blocks to be and setting them there. And I also added one more support there in the middle so that that wood is fully level. I don't know if I got it in the last video or not, but I'll insert a photo here and you can visibly see that wood bend down. But now I've added that one little support right there and it is perfectly level. Other than that, I've still been working on, like I said, more blocking on this side. I've stopped there, I haven't continued though, but I have added one new turnout right there. I have another one left to do, but this will be turning out this way and going out this way. And the idea is this will be coming out underneath this tunnel through probably right where that Lionel box is, and then it's gonna go off somewhere that way eventually. I might add the turntable right here. I might do something further on that way, I don't know. We'll just have to see how things go in the future, but this is just being done right now so that when I can expand, it's already done and I don't have to tear up track. Now, one of today's newest developments is I have this piece of Lexan here in my hand, and if we come over here, it fits perfectly right on top of this. And this is because I'm adding a control panel for the layout. Two of them, actually. This one's going to be for everything over here because there's all sorts of buttons, switches, and all that kind of stuff. So this one will control all this side of the layout. And that piece right there is going to go right here, and it's going to control everything for the yard. All of the 
buttons, any of the switches that aren't going to be controlled from the ASC2, and I can also put my track on and off power switches on there, and anything else that I want to be able to control from my control board. Now I have to give a shout out to Chris's trainings and things, I got this idea solely from him. I always thought about doing a control panel, but I never really took action on it until I saw his. It's a really cool board, and I was like, you know what, instead of just putting all of my buttons and stuff just on my railing, because you can do that, but it might get a little bit hectic and you might, you know, lose track of where things go, especially in a large yard like I have. So, I'm deciding to do a control board for the ease of things, and because it looks cool. Anyways, I don't quite like the look of the clear. I know, it might be cool to do it where you can see the wires poking through underneath. I'm going to be adding pinstripe tape on the top to mark where the tracks are, and I just can't take a clear board with that because the pinstripe doesn't show up well. So, I'm going to be painting this white right now. Let's go. Okay, now I've got our Lexan out here, and now we're just going to spray paint it white. Here we go. Okay, that's a pretty good first base layer. I'm gonna give it a few minutes to dry and then we'll come out and do it again. I have to slightly change my mind last minute. I'm gonna spray the other side too. This will probably be the side I use because the other one, I didn't clean it first when I should have. That's completely my fault and I, yeah. Oh well. Ah, yeah. That one looks a lot better. All right, let's give it some time to dry and uh, then we might give this one a second coat or both. I don't, I, I don't know. This one's interesting. Well, that's drying. That's Check this out, my grandfather is helping me out here. Check that out. That's gonna look super good. This is going underneath the Lexan to hold it up. This is the same kind of railing material that we were using before. I probably already said this, but I gotta give a big thanks to my grandfather. He's the one who's letting me even build this in his shop. And uh, I definitely couldn't have done this without him and a couple of his friends. Their expertise, their knowledge, and their support has been what has been able to make this happen. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to get things running. Okay, it's been some time. Now, let's get back to painting. Okay, with the second coat done, I think this looks really good. I think I'm gonna let this dry and this will probably end up being how things are. Hey, okay, so now we're going to install one of these. This is a terminal block. This is where our power comes in from our transformer and then is distributed out to the rest of the track by these. This one in particular comes with four mounting legs and I I've gotten myself these little screws with a washer on them to go onto the board so it doesn't break. Now ideally, you want to put this somewhere that you can access very easily in case of anything going wrong. And since this one's going to be on this side of the layout, right here is actually one of the best places to do it. This is where the table comes over my head. I can get here very easily, and if I put the block right here or right here, I can very, access, I can very easily access it. So I think I'm going to put it right over here so I can get to it right where I need to. However, for now, I'm going to be standing up fully, because I can. Well, I'm just now figuring out that my drill won't fit underneath the two tables, so now I'm rethinking where I put this. However, I'm not rethinking it too much. I'm just rethinking that I possibly angle it on the side like this, or like this. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. I am very quickly learning that doing this sideways is interesting, but it works and that's what matters. Okay, and that's on, and that is secure. Now we can finally start dropping feeder wires from up here to down here. This is getting really cool. Check this out. That is a track connection if I've ever seen one. With that connection we just made, now we're going to drill a hole right through here. Except I don't know if I want to, yeah I do. Right through there means we're coming right through the bottom. We're going to put the connections right here on the switch. We're going to be aiming for right there. Okay, so it is now the final day I'm here on my trip. I've got my friend Paul here and Bruce. He's the O-Scale coordinator for the Crossville Model Railroad Club. We are hard at work wiring up some layout stuff. 
We've made a couple decisions. We're actually gonna change up how the wiring is done right now. We're only gonna do a couple feeders for now, just so we can get trains running, because I have to do something on the 15th. And then we'll come back and finish up the rest of the feeders later on. However, I will go ahead and show you what we've done under here. We've got this whole block, four of them at least, wired up down here, all going to various points along the incline. It was about halfway that we just decided we're gonna go ahead and try to wire up as much as we can on this side and just get it done. So that is what we're going to do now. Okay, so it's now the end of the day after my final trip. I'm just gonna go over a recap of what we did. I didn't film much of me working with the other guys, mainly because we were so focused on getting stuff done that there wasn't enough time to set up a camera. We were so busy. We literally spent about six hours total between all of us just working out here combined, either by all three of us or just a couple of us, depending on whose schedules worked out. But we spent a lot of time working, but let's go over what we did. On this side of the layout, we put all these wires underneath going to a few of the blocks and this going to the block terminal. It's hard to see, but the same story goes for right here. I've done two drop downs to this block terminal right here, and those go to the two main lines that run through the yard. Now I've fully completed this control panel, so it runs on these hinges right here, and I'll put pinstripe taping throughout here to show the tracks on the upper level. And this one is currently in the works. I'm gonna split this half and half. So on one half, it's gonna be this side of the yard, and on the other half, it's gonna be the far side of the yard. That way, it's not coming out too far. We had the full piece of Lexan, which is double the length of this, come out, and it came out almost about here, and it really would have cut off your ability to walk through here, and it just would have made things annoying. So this keeps it minimalistic, but still operational and very cool looking. So yeah, that's all we've done for this trip. It was relatively productive. We did quite a bit of stuff. There's a lot more to do, probably a couple more trips before July 15th, and a lot of preparation and cleaning the track, cleaning the shop, and a lot of other stuff I'll get into later. But yeah, so far, everything's going pretty well. Anyways, that's all for this video. I'm Sam, and I'll see you guys in the next update. This is 100% going as the end clip, but you want to know how you save time when you're waiting for paint to dry? You don't watch it, you film your intro, and then you go back to painting. Well, hey, folks. Ooh. Okay, now we're going
Well, I'm just now figuring out that my drill won't fit underneath the two tables, so now I'm rethinking where I put this. Number one, I have a Discord. Well, hi. <laughs> You're good. Well, sawdust, huh? Yeah. You're sanding. You're sanding. Right. This is really Holy cow. That's a lot. I am very quickly learning that doing this sideways, sideways, sideways is interesting.